is Glenn Young and we're back taking a look at more knots and hitches and today we're going to look at one of the most useful hitches in all of climbing which is the clove hitch. In recent times it's become the primary way that people attach themselves to the anchor at multi-pitch stations because the rope is dynamic, it's burly so it's not going to get cut by anything very easily and uh, if you were to take a fall on this accidentally while attached to the anchor even if you're slightly above it because the dynamic properties of the rope you're less likely to cause damage to your anchor if you're using natural protection or damage to you uh, because it does stretch a little bit, take up some of that energy. So we're going to take a look at a few different ways to tie the clove hitch and it's important to know a few different ways to tie the clove hitch because they're used in different applications, especially once you get into higher levels of climbing where you might be doing rescue or you might be working with multiple climbers at the same time at a single belay station. So first I'm going to do what is commonly referred to as the air clove, which simply means that you're not using a carabiner when you're constructing the clove hitch. So I take any section of rope, this is my right hand, this is my left hand here, and I'm going to make some twists in the rope. So keep in mind that this is, image is going to be reversed for you as the viewer, since this is going to be on your left and this will be on your right. Okay, so I'm first going to take my right hand and make a twist so the strand that was in my right hand goes behind the strand that was in my left. Now I'm going to move to my right and I'm going to do the exact same thing to create the exact same loop. The strand that is in my right hand goes behind the strand that is in my left. And with these two loops now, I'm going to take the right loop and slide it in front of the left loop. Now the carabiner that you're using would then clip right through here and then you pull on either one of these strands, which are called the legs of the clove hitch, to cinch that down and you make sure you lock your carabiner if you're using a locking carabiner for the application. That is called an air clove. Okay. Another way to do an air clove is to cross your hands. So in this case, I'm going to be crossing my wrists as I grab the rope. Okay. So my right hand, my right wrist is over the top of my left hand or my left wrist. And now I pull across, which you can see has automatically created two loops if I don't change the orientation of my hands. Okay, one more time. My right hand crossed over the top of my left and I simply pull, which creates the two loops. And now my right hand slides in front of my left hand or the loop that is in my right hand slides in front of my left. Now when I say slide, I like to think of it as this is like a quarter and I'm sliding it into a change machine or into a gumball machine as opposed to folding it which will end up creating a different hitch or no hitch at all. So I slide that together and then I clip right through there and I pull on either of those legs and you can see I end up with the same clove hitch. The way to tie a clove hitch is to tie it on a carabiner and the most common way that this is done in climbing is when you're attaching yourself to an anchor. First, I'm going to take my locking carabiner and I'm going to do what's called the Captain Hook method for clipping the carabiner. I take the carabiner, face the gate away from me, pull the gate forward so it's like a hook, and then I clip it into the master point and then I flip it. The old clip and flip. Now the gate points up and out away from the rock, or in this case, away from my tree. Now to clip this myself into the anchor, I'm going to use the handshake method. Okay? So I reach out as if I'm shaking someone's hand and I grab the rope and now as if I'm doing a backhand, I backhand that into the carabiner. I reach down the rope again in the same manner as if I'm going to shake someone's hand and I make that a loop as I pass it across and backhand that in. So it's the same motion twice 
and when I tighten that up, it creates a clove hitch. So I'm going to do that again a little bit more rapidly. Okay, grab the rope, snap it in, pull a little snug, grab the rope, and snap it in. Okay, last time. And then lock the carabiner down. So that's one way that you can lock yourself into the anchor using one hand to stabilize yourself, grabbing the anchor so you're less likely to fall while you're attaching yourself, <coughs> which is important in a steep environment. Another way is commonly done off of a piece of protection. So for example, if I am lead climbing and I might not have good communication with my belayer, so it's difficult for me to tell the belayer to take, or I don't trust my belayer to take. If I clip through this quick draw as if I am lead climbing, I can clove myself off, which is much easier than trying to attach a personal anchor, especially into a bolt where the carabiner from your piece of protection, in this case a quick draw, and the carabiner from your personal anchor can get pinched in there and make it difficult to retrieve. So in order to make my clove hitch here, I'm going to reach across onto the spine side of the carabiner. That's the opposite side of the carabiner as the gate. Turn my thumb down. I say, boo, there's no gate on this side of the carabiner. Then reaching behind, I grab the strand behind. I pull that strand up and across as I rotate my thumb up to the side where there is a gate. Yeah, that's the gate side. <laughs> okay, so thumbs down, boo, this side doesn't have a gate. To across, yay, this side has a gate. And just like before, I slide this forward rather than folding it. So I slide this forward and then I slap it in and now I have a clove hitch. Nice thing about this is I can rest, I can relax, and then when I'm ready to lead climb again, I take out the loop that's closest to the gate and it's already set up to lead climb. So one more time. Here I am clipped in as a lead climber. I reach down on the other side, pull across, clip in, cinch it down, and now I can rest. Okay, when I'm ready to climb again, I take the outermost loop out and I'm ready to climb. Okay, the last thing that I want to show in regard to the clove hitch is how to adjust it to make it exactly as tight or as loose as you'd like it for the particular application. This is especially helpful when you're anchoring yourself and you need to go out a little bit further from the anchor to take a look at a climber or more commonly once you're attached there's a little bit of slack and you want to take that slack up. So on the clove hitch there's a variety of strands and I like to identify two strands I call the handles of the clove hitch and those are the outermost strands. So you have one outermost strand here, inner strand, inner strand, and then another outermost strand on this side. It's more easily accessible by flipping the carabiner around. In order to adjust the length of this, what you want to do is you want to pull down or away from your anchor on one of those two handles. If you look to see where that handle wraps through the carabiner and then comes back down, you'll notice that this strand here is attached to me. So if I pull down on this strand, it tightens me up. I then pinch the carabiner and I pull down on the remainder, remaining strand and it puts me right where I want without deforming the hitch. If I want slack, I find the strand that's going to the ground, which is where the slack is coming from. I grab the handle on the opposite side and again I pull down or away from the anchor until I've got about as much slack as I want. I pinch it in place and then I pull on the remaining strand and it cinches me down with a little bit more slack. The reason we do that is there are some events where pushing a strand through can result in deformation of the hitch when it cinches back up again. <laughs> this is doing a good job of not doing it. Um, and if the hitch is deformed enough, sometimes it can be difficult for it to engage properly or it could start to wrap against the side of the gate of the carabiner and if that gate were unlocked, 
it could become problematic as it presses and unlatches itself from the carabiner.